the recovery wasn't like it wasn't smooth as the first one. It was very hard. I feeling I was feeling a lot of uncomfortable when I when I became when I came back to train. I was still feeling a lot of. Download the All Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights. Challenge your friends. Level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. All right, Herbert, man. We got to talk about it, right? Right away. You know, you've been absent. You've been, I'm not saying missing, but you haven't been competing for a long time. And we know you've had some injuries, had some surgeries. Just take us through, you know, all the stuff that you went through in the past year and a half or so. Yeah. And then when I, when I took the fight against Bill Aldo, I, I felt good. Everything, the camp was good, but I don't know. Maybe 40, 30 seconds in the fight. When I tried to take him down, my my ACL gave out on the on the on my right knee. And I almost landed on the bottom. Locked a triangle, but I couldn't squeeze. <laughs> it was a very weird feeling. Then on the second round, I just couldn't stand up anymore. And I had to to take the, the L. And I did another ACL surgery. And I've been putting a lot of time, a lot of work into my rehab. I've been pushing and training very hard to build a lot of muscle on the leg because it's two in a row, two surgeries in a row. It's not been easy. But, yeah, I'm finally seeing the the time to get back, like, in a, a less than a month now to get back in Atlantic City and, and put in, like, restart my career. I, I'm calling myself the Blaze 3.0. Okay. The 2.0 wasn't, wasn't very good, but the 2.0 will, will be back. And, you know, the same surgery, basically, right? So, like, how did the surgery go? Was it smooth? It was not smooth. It was actually very hard. My doctor, Dr. Howard Gelb, it was supposed to be a two-hour surgery. It was like a six-hour surgery. He, he had two more surgeries after that, had to cancel. Because he was said my fingers would die from from the surgery. It was a little complicated for him to to get around and clean everything up. But the recovery wasn't like it wasn't smooth as the first one. It was very hard. I feeling I was feeling a lot of uncomfortable when I when I became when I came back to train. I was still feeling a lot of instability. I now finally now after a lot of rehab, a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling myself again. The vintage, vintage of the blaze will be back on, on March 30th. Everybody knows your potential. You know, you just haven't had the opportunities to be healthy because you've been injured for the last, what, pretty much three years, right? Three years, exactly. Yeah. Hey, mental battles, man, that's the biggest thing, right? Physical, physically, you could pretty much do anything, but mentally, like pushing yourself, is it was it hard the last year? It was a hard, but to be honest, for me, it was mentally. I feel I know what I need to do. I need to train. I need to keep focusing on myself. I had a gene. I I focus on on the business side a little bit, and I kept helping Gilbert. Gilbert fought a lot, so I did I did a lot of his coaching, a lot of his a breakdown for his fight for his opponents, and we travel to corner him. But the thing for me was just getting healthy. It's the it's hard. It's hard to get in health. It's hard to stay healthy. And now I'm 100%. Uh, like I said, it'll be the blaze, the new blaze 3.0, but also the vintage blaze that goes there and, and put a great show for the fans. Yeah. Um, in the last year, uh, I talked to a couple of your teammates, and they were telling me that you've been helping them for their camps. So you've been yes. training for a while. Yes, I've been training for a while. I I wanted to fight in November, then December. Then I had a small uncomfortable injury that I couldn't fight in December. Nothing crazy, but just it was too short of a time for preparing. And then March was the date. Yeah, it gave me a lot of time to, like I said, build the muscle, do a lot of sparring, get all my reflex back. And I'm feeling, I'm definitely feeling myself like I'm feeling very good to to go there and and do like a I did on my first UFC, my first two UFC, UFC fighters, UFC fights. Julio Arce, 
pretty good opponent, man, for for return. Atlantic City. How do you feel about Arce and and his uh, style? He's he's good. He's crappy. He can do everything. He's mostly, I say, he's a counter striker. But he has a good high kick. Has good finishes in the 45. Has good finishes in the 35. Their experience. I li I like the style. I like the fights. It will be a challenge for sure. But I'm ready. I'm ready. I think he has all the tools. But I think I have it. I'm I'm taller. I'm stronger. I'm I'm used to these weights. I'm a regular to to big size 145. And he will be in a smaller size. So I'm gonna use my. I plan to use my my physique. On, on my advantage and, and empower him through. Are are there any fighters that you faced before that that were smaller for the division that you faced and and saw the advantages of that? To be honest, not really. When I started my career, I was a smaller forty five, but at the, the time it went, I started building more, more and more, more muscle. And the last few fight, fights that I fought, I was like actually the was just bigger than me. I was on the size and. Evan Dunham, it was a guy that I, I thought he could give me a lot of problems because he came from 155, but it was actually a quick fight. So it will be the first time that one they will be the, on the bigger side on the gate. I'll, I will try to enjoy that. Yeah, that's that's nice to nice to have, right? Just that that extra yeah. <laughs> extra boost, right? Uh, uh, you know, for for training camp, you know, you've been training for a long time. So, what changes when you get into a camp? Like, what's the differences for you? I think more mentally, and of course, we do we cut we do a lot of diets. But I think for this camp, especially Julio, it's a he's a southpaw, and we have a lot of southpaws in, the, in our gym. But Michael Johnson it was busy; he fought, so I lost him quickly. But we have a Brazilian guy here with my secret weapon, Wendell Cobra Araujo. He's a Capoeira world champion. He jiu-jitsu brown belt, and that guy is so strong. So he's been my main training partner for this for this camp. He's a little wild, true. If you let him, you don't control him. He comes, he comes crazy. So we're doing paddling a lot, a lot in uh, Kill Cliff. But we have a lot of guys. I work through with a few other guys too. Rob Lawler has been guiding me through of course Gilbert has a fight now so he's focused on him but yeah he it was it's, it's been very good at Cliff Sean Soriano will be in my corner I work for him sometimes sometimes not like sparring him sometimes so it's, it's we had a, a room full of killers so there's there's no human material it's a lot and you know you and you know you and your brother Gilbert you guys you know Gilbert's obviously fighting real soon and then you fight a couple of weeks after that, and you guys have been in camp together. So having your comeback and having him in camp with you together, working together, there's got to be something there that gives you that extra boost because, you know, it's your brother, man. It's blood. Yeah, so I'm here at the hotel. And for his new T-shirt He's going to cut weight very soon. So I did a little bit of my training before because I know that it may be a long night, may not. We don't know how it goes. But it's good because especially saturday we do a, a circuit at his garage you guys can find that on, on his youtube channel at gilbert, gilbert durinho and there's a there's a video for me and him training to training like doing the camp doing the the circuit that's how we call back to back and it's good he's pushing me i'm pushing him and it just feel good to be together like that like when we were kids it reminds me when we were back in brazil doing that together we train, but we don't train a lot because the size is different. Even like like you click, there's so many guys. We have different like timing slots for the sparring, so we don't spar a lot together. But it's good to be training for him and see him pushing himself makes me want to do the same or even more. Yeah, I watched that video. So people that haven't watched the video, they need to watch that video to see how hard you're working for your comeback, yes. right? Very, very yeah. hard. And it seems like, you know, you mentioned the, the mindset, right, of when you get into a camp. You, you're a very positive person. Every time I talk to you in an interview, you're very positive, you're, you're bright, you know, you, you're never, like, down. You know what I mean? Because, you know, when, when, when you go through something like you've gone through, a lot of fighters have, like, dark thoughts, right? And then you, you kind of see it in interviews. But you, you don't have none of that. No, because, you know, 
life, there's nothing you can do. You gotta focus on what you can control. I go hurt, so what? So I have the choice of get here, lay down, and keep crying, or I can go try to fix myself. Hey, you gotta be one step at a time. You gotta like people try to do everything at once, and then you, you re-injure again. You know, you gotta follow the steps. What you can do? I try to be. The Japanese has a great kaizen philosophy mindset that's today better than yesterday and tomorrow better than today that's what i try to do like what can i focus is this i'm going to do this one day one percent better every day and in 100 days it'll be 100 percent better that's what i'm trying to do after i hurt myself when i was coming back angla unsung he got he got the same injury and then he came hey man how you doing how you did he said man you're gonna be fine just don't stress about I give you 100% on the recovery. It will be not be easy. It will be annoying. It's annoying. It's it's a lot of work. But you gotta, you know, keep your work ethic strong. Go there, give everything, and you're gonna be back in no time. Yeah, good energy, man. And you know, this I'm 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 interested to see how you look, especially with how long you've been actually been training. You know, some guys they they get injured and then they like almost immediately go into a camp without that yes. time of just training and just getting back to normal, right? Yes, and I think I I think I evolved a lot. I had a lot of new tools to my arsenal. I look in the last few trainings there and being I feel mean, I'm feeling very sharp. So I think people can be people that maybe because one thing that I know him a little bit, it was that a lot of people didn't know I got injured in the fight. So I got a lot of hate because people say, hey, he, this guy gave up because he was tired. <laughs> Everybody get tired. You just keep, we are fighting. We are fighters. You think people, the guy going to lay down because he's tired. People can think whatever they want. But at the end of the day, I was injured. I, couldn't, I just couldn't stand up. I wish I could stand up. I, I was injured 40 seconds on the fight. I fought the first whole first round. I came back on the second. So <laughs> I don't need to. To, hey, um, you know, I, there's nothing to cry about. It is what it is. So, I I want to to be back. In, I, I don't want to prove to anybody anything. I just want to prove to myself that I can still fight at the highest level and bring myself to the top of the division. That's where I know I belong. Yeah, they need to change the result. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It's an injury stoppage. It's not an exhaustion I, from I mean, damage. I don't even mind the, the TKO thing. Yeah, is it TKO? It got hurt like even when. And the Silva got hurt with the TKOs. Yeah. That that doesn't even doesn't even make sense. It's more about how people were portraying myself as a guy that got really tired and then just didn't want to fight anymore, which which is not the reality. But again, I can only control my performance. And I will show them. And who wants to see? We'll see. Who doesn't? The people can say whatever they want. What do you expect to do in this fight coming up? What do you What do you want to show yourself? I'm a finisher. I'm a. I have my my style is that I push forward. I push the pace, especially in the first round. I bring the fight. I, I there's not, I already study him. There's nothing to study before before uh, during the cage. Uh, the first minute, just filling out. There's nothing to fill out. I already know what I need to do is to get a finish, and I, I'll. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to step forward. I'm going to look for, for the finish. can be on the feet. I'm going to be on the ground. I think he, Julio is a very experienced guy. He's going to expect the, the strong storm. And he's going to try to survive to push push me in the, in, in, into the deep waters. But I'm ready. My my cardio has been excellent. So he, I'll be ready for everything. There you go. One last question. You're the school. Uh, the way martial arts, yes. how's that been going on? You know, doing your business, and you know, you got a lot of high level guys coming in there to to do work with you. Yeah, high level guys at the moment. Sydney Outlaw comes comes and trains for me regularly. Impa Kasanganai, Michael Johnson, Mitch McKee, Wendell, Tio Tang. Ah, there's so many guys. Adamu, Chris Jagos, uh, Anthony. Man, that's that's. I, 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 so, uh, there's more guys, but I think I remember yeah. most most of them. Oh, Landry, Landry Yard. So, Andrew Harrison, 
I don't know, Jason Jackson. Yeah. Uh, so all those guys, I have I have a good good instructor there. I have a black belt for my Cory Maguire. He's a he was a, a bronze medalist in the in the world in jiu-jitsu. Then I have another guy, Jose Cadavi. He's teaching tonight because he's supposed to be my class tonight. He's a two-time world champion, Gui and Ogi. So we have high-level coaches. The kids program is growing a lot. We have kickboxing that CEO teaches and Wendell Cobra teaches. So the gym, the facility is a, is a beautiful facility. We build a state-of-the-art facility. And we have world-class coaching with a bunch of yeah. UFC fighters, PFL fighters, Bellator, one championship, the best things in the world. I said to the students, you guys should enjoy this because it doesn't matter how hardcore fan of the NFL you are, there's not a single chance of you playing ball with Tom Brady. Yes. But right yes. here, you have the chance to roll for me, roll for Michael Johnson, for Angola, for all those guys. And the, yeah. In other sports, that would be impossible. I'm a huge fan of of football, of soccer, right? And there's no way I'm going to play with Messi, with Neymar, with Cristiano Ronaldo, but through martial arts, we can give these opportunities for our students and, and they, they like it a lot. So the gene has been good. It's growing every single month. And we, we hope to keep growing and eventually have a, a bunch of the way martial arts here all over South Florida. There you go. March 30th, UFC Fight Night, Atlantic City, Herbert Burns. Thank you, man, so much for taking the time. And yeah, man, everybody's rooting for you. You know, the comeback story is always something that's uh, that people love, man. And, and hopefully, it, you know, it, you, you perform at your best what you expect. Ah, I expect a finish. I've been, like I said, it's not been easy. It's been a lot of hard, a lot of hard work. I, I'm, I've been working my, toward the goal to be in the, on the biggest stage like UFC my whole life. And when I got there, I did two great fights, two great finishes, and then uh, bad performance due to physical <laughs> incapabilities in the first fight, a bad weight cut that destroyed my performance, and then a serious injury that took me off of doing the fight. So I regrouped myself. I, I'm like, I still have a lot in me to give. I'm like wine. That's what I'm feeling. The older you get, the better you get. Right? So I've been working hard and i can't wait to be marked to march 30 come and put in a great show and people think hey this guy's back hey, hey he's for real <laughs> <laughs>